Hello everybody, so my name is Ashley Fry and I will be experimenting with printmaking for this screencast for ARU 330 Spring 2023. So I began my exploration with stamping. I decided to use found objects, foam, and fruit stamping materials and I used acrylic paint to print these onto a variety of surfaces such as cardboard, mixed media paper, and different qualities of printmaking paper as well as construction paper. So I began with found object stamping. Um, I just found some objects on the ground at the park um, that had some really interesting natural textures such as branches, pine cones, and a egg carton. And at first I tried pressing these objects into the paint and I realized this didn't really give a great transfer. So instead I opted for painting the paint onto the object and this allowed me to get a really interesting painterly quality and experiment with the textures of the brush strokes and different colors as well. As you can see here, you can really see the evidence of the brush strokes, um, and this shows in the print as well, um, and I just thought this was really interesting, um, and the variety of materials and textures here is really evident. Um, so I experimented with pressure and the amount of paint, and then I moved on to experimenting with moving and dragging the objects, and something interesting that I noticed is that the texture of some of the objects was maintained even while dragging, such as in the pine cone and the feather especially. You can see some really interesting textures achieved here. I moved on to mixed media paper, which I felt really captured the um, textural quality of the objects better than the construction paper, and the colors really popped. So you can see here the natural texture of the egg carton is especially evident in this paper. Then I went in deeper with the pine branch just because it was such an interesting and flexible material. I tried slapping it, dragging it, and pushing it into the paper. And the slapping was my favorite because it kind of reminded me of the, the branch being blown in the wind and slapping against a window. Then I moved on to carved foam stamping. I carved um, some shapes using a box cutter out of a piece of foam. And my favorite part about using the foam is that it's really absorbent. And so the paint really soaked into the foam and I found that I didn't have to use a lot of paint to get a nice smooth, soft transfer. Um, but when I did apply more paint, I got some really beautiful brush strokes here. As you can see here, the colors really pop. Then I moved on to fruit and vegetable stamping as the book had advised. Um, I used a potato like it advised, but I also used some other interesting fruits and veggies like peppers, different parts of the pepper, um, an apple, and even some carrots to experiment with round materials. I pressed these materials into the paint which worked just fine. And what I noticed is that a moderate amount of paint with a decent amount of pressure is um, allowed me to get the, the shape of the object pretty good. But with less pressure and more paint, you got this really sticky kind of organic textural quality, um, as you can see here. And especially with the carrot rolling, um, it looks very wet and sticky, and I thought this was a very evocative textural quality. And then I moved on again to rotating and dragging, um, and something I noticed with these materials, because they're so smooth, when you apply different colors of paint, you get this really interesting expressive radial pattern. And it kind of just gave me the sense that the objects were in motion. Then I had to go in on my own, on its own paper uh, with the carrot throw trails. And I just threw the carrot across the paper. Um, and this was super fun to do. And I feel like it tells a story and really brings the object to life. Because you can get a sense of the direction and the path that the carrot was following as it was thrown across the paper. Then I went in to um, cutting the objects as the book directed. Um, I cut some shapes out of them, and then I also actually went off book and I tried to gouge lines into the shapes or into the matrices to see what that would look like. And instead of making a negative space, the paint actually sunk into the lines, which I think was really interesting and kind of unexpected. The carrot didn't really work out as intended, but again, these the quality of the transfer is just so beautiful. And you can see here I made a repeating pattern with the potato. And then I just made a piece on construction paper actually over top the carrot trails, um, and I just printed everything that I had in all kinds of different ways. And this piece is just so expressive and exciting and really has an organic quality um, that I feel like the fruits and vegetables brought out in their transfers. I was really attracted to the prints that the pepper made and so I made another piece on cardboard 
Um, and I created this tree branch shape because it kind of reminded me of some leaves. And I feel like this particular one really opens up a dialogue about how we use natural materials in our daily lives, such as cardboard. So to highlight an artist, I'm going to begin with Anne Gant. Anne Gant is a professional glass blower, um, but she uses her freshly blown glass to print burned images onto paper. Um, and this is called pyrography. And I thought this was a really interesting and creative medium. Um, and something interesting about it is it has this liquidity, as she says, that echoes the original glass form. And I think this is similar to the fruit and vegetable stamping. You really see evidence of the material you use for stamping. So then I moved into collagraphs. I did a linear, smooth, and textured collagraph. And for the smooth collagraph, I found it easy to trace a pre-cut shape that I would be using for the collagraph. Um, and this allowed me to plan out my composition by drawing and then cutting out these shapes with a box cutter. And then I was able to plan them on the actual plate before I glued them down. I applied the paint directly to the raised areas, um, first applying a small amount of paint. And something I noticed is that the smooth collagraph is not as smooth as I intended because the cardboard that I used um, for the raised areas was corrugated. And so I got this linear quality and these lines are all going in different directions. I um, mean, it appears very textural. And so I applied more paint um, and I did different colors as well. And I did this over top the other uh, less paint application print. And as you can see with more paint, you get you know thicker lines that are vary in thickness. Um, and something that this reminded me of is kind of like shoe prints, um, as if these materials were walking across the paper and left these prints. Then I just went in again um, without reapplying paint and printed on some construction paper. And you can see with less paint, you get more texture from these lines. Um, and it's kind of fuzzy looking, um, but in some areas you can see the paint really showed and some it was much less. So then I moved on to my linear collagraph. I used popsicle sticks and I wanted to focus on negative space and how these lines um, interact with each other. So at first I did not apply enough paint. So over top of that, I applied a thicker coat of paint and I found that even with a thick coat of paint, the texture um, of the wood grain of the popsicle sticks is still evident. So that gave it a really organic quality that was not expected. And then I moved on to my textured collagraph. I used materials such as corrugated cardboard, pipe cleaners, faux fur, thin wire, popsicle sticks, string, and crumpled paper. And first I applied a thinner coat of paint and I found that this transfer was kind of difficult. Um, you do see some of the shaping in there, which is what I had intended, um, but not as much as I thought. Um, so I applied more paint and I actually got a similar effect on this piece of cardboard here. Um, but these little squiggly shapes that I have in here and the, the texture and the lack of a complete transfer almost makes this feel like I'm looking at germs under a microscope or something. Um, so to highlight another artist, we have Lauren Cusro. She's inspired by color shapes and patterns in nature. And one thing that's interesting to me about her artwork is that she feels it is a collective whole instead of individual pieces. And she relates this to the human condition as in we are all different, but we are made for communities and relation. So then I moved into monotypes. I did additive, subtractive, and stencil monotypes. And I used a recycled plastic jig sheet and some watercolor to create my monotypes. And first I applied a smaller amount of paint um, and I found it created these really interesting areas of negative space. And there is a little bit of texture evident as well. And surprisingly, with a thicker application of paint on construction paper here, there actually is more texture than I intended. And I think this might be because of the texture of the construction paper itself. Then I moved on to subtractive monotypes by wiping away the paint with a paper towel. I wrote the word subtract backwards, knowing that it would be a mirrored image when I printed. And while the transfer was not very complete and you can't quite read the word, this still kind of opened my eyes to the potential of a subtractive monotype and what you can really do to express yourself with this negative space. Then I moved on to stencil monotypes. I began with watercolor and I used tape to create the stencil and the watercolor bled over the tape, which I was not intending. I wanted nice straight lines, but this bleeding effect actually I found to be very beautiful and expressive and attractive. I did go in with acrylic paint and reapplied my tape for cleaner lines just to see what that would look like. And with this particular one, I focused on 
my brush strokes and I deliberately created my brush strokes in different directions and this created this really interesting textured linear quality to each of these individual shapes um, that I thought made it very very dynamic. To highlight another artist we have John Paul McCaughey. Um, I was really attracted to his found printed ads in the book but also he has some really graphic quality prints that I'm attracted to his style um, and I really I'm fascinated by the variety of materials and approaches that he uses. So I'm moving on to relief black prints. I use styrofoam, rubber erasers, and linoleum. So to start with styrofoam, I used an old styrofoam paint mixing tray and I cut two shapes out of it. And I used a dull pencil to carve one of them very deep and gouging and one of them with soft carvings. And this soft carving one is meant to be a continuous print that is able to be continued one after another after another. So beginning with the gouged one, um, I noticed these lines were a lot thicker and rougher looking um, because the styrofoam ripped in some places. But something I really had a lot of fun with here is applying the print onto the paper in a bunch of different alignments and orientations and even layering it over itself in some places and this this really in a way created its own cohesive pattern um, especially with these spiral shapes even though they're not perfectly lined up they look like they could be and then I moved on to the smooth carving as you can see the lines are a lot smoother um, but still just as thick so you don't need to carve into the foam that hard I discovered um, I did find that there is a learning curve with aligning these prints. Um, registration can be really hard. So I layer these on top of each other, um, and I think texture really, really shines um, in this particular piece. You can really see the texture of the cardboard, um, and these naturalistic looking designs and carvings um, are highlighted by this texture. Then I moved on to rubber eraser relief. Um, I thought rubbing a or using a rubber eraser would be really great um, for sustainability and keeping things cheap. I planned my image out in my sketchbook first and then I drew it onto the block and carved it away and this just really helped with carving. Um, so I pressed it into the paint at first and I noticed that you can achieve a lot of different qualities based on the amount of paint you use and how hard you press. As you can see here, experimentations with reprinting. You can see a lot of textures here with less pressure. Um, and then for this one, I wanted it to be two colors, and so I experimented with applying the paint directly to the block in both a meticulous, meticulous excuse me, fashion and also very haphazardly. And I found that no matter how you apply the paint, you get a very similar quality, um, though obviously this one is much more full of paint, and you lose some of the, um, the negative space, especially these circles in the mushroom. I experimented further on mixed media paper with different qualities of paint, such as um, watered down paint. And then I did it on printmaking paper and I feel like the um, the shape and form of the objects really showed and shown in um, on the printmaking paper, as you can see here. And I experimented with a radial design, which was really fun. Then I went into oil-based printmaking ink. Um, I tried the split fountain technique, which involves using the brayer to blend two colors into a gradient. And as you can see here, the transfers with the ink is, is very, very clear. Um, and I think it was best with the ink compared to the paint. So then I moved on to linoleum relief. Um, one thing I will note is that for safety to keep the block from slipping, instead of using a bench hook, I used a recycled shelf liner that is sticky. And I again planned it out in my sketchbook and then I found what was useful for me is using black sharpie and white paint pen to really map out the areas that needed to be carved, which is white, and the areas that did not, which is black. I started with paint just to see how it would turn out um, and I found that it was very hard to get the right amount of pressure with the paint with this linoleum. And so I moved right into ink here and I found that there's a balance of pressure in the amount of ink that needs to be achieved with these materials. You really got to find that niche. Um, so I experimented with putting the paper onto the block instead of vice versa and using a smooth material like a roller or a spatula to press it into the block. And this got some really, really great transfers. Now there is a little bit of chatter here, um, but the transfers are very clear and you can see where I cut the lines. Here I'm using the flat spatula, which I preferred because I felt that I could use my fingers to really distribute my pressure. 
And then I tried printing onto a shirt because I wanted to experiment with printing onto different materials and different textures of materials. Um, and this kind of showed me that you can print on just about anything. And then finally, because um, I had a little bit of extra time, I decided to use the press. Um, now I will note that in the printmaking studio here at Kutztown, you need to know what to do when you're using the press. Um, so I advise that you take the class before you try to use the press. Um, that's very important. Um, but you can see here the transfers are really, really beautiful and very, very clear when using the press. So that's the end of my presentation. Um, I will say that this really taught me that printmaking doesn't have to be an expensive medium and it doesn't have to be something that you need a whole studio space for either. You can print make in a bunch of ways that is sustainable and affordable and that's something really cool to me that I'll probably continue to experiment with um, in my own time.